Hello church family, um, I'm here again with another Sunday School On Demand. Uh, my name is Jason and um, as many of you know, I'm the discipleship pastor with Graceway. And uh, we've been doing uh, Sunday School, uh, basically, like I said, on demand. And so in video format, uh, we've been going through where we had left off uh, before the whole COVID-19 and the quarantine um, that kind of forced us away. Um, uh, from being physically with each other and so uh, you know we decided as a church staff to start bringing you Sunday School on demand and so um, hopefully you'll start to see a little bit of a change um, I know we'll uh, soon be going back um, as, as a body for for a corporate worship um, that's a possibility that will be um, happening very soon actually um, in, in June um, but we understand that Sunday School uh, in the way that it was before and the continuing, uh, uh, you know, guidelines that are being suggested by the CDC and our, and our state government, um, you know, that still can't happen. And so uh, we are going to be looking for ways to, uh, to I think, make this experience a little, little bit better and, and maybe a little bit more communicative as far as being a community as Sunday school was before. Uh, so you won't have to listen to me drone on. Um, I, and I do appreciate for those who have all uh, watched these. Um, I hope that you have learned um, some something from it and and gained of you know a deeper knowledge in in, in the Bible as these uh, things are are tended to uh, be geared towards and so uh, as always if you have your um, Bible studies for life man mine's looking a little rough <laughs> uh, if you have your um, Bible studies for life uh, book uh, the Spring 2020 edition um, we are in study uh, two, uh, dealing with messy relationships. If you don't have it, uh, that's fine. Uh, you can go grab your Bible. Um, well, this book is awesome. The best book is the Bible. Um, so, but go ahead and grab your Bible. We'll be in Philippians uh, chapter two. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and, uh, and get uh, over um, uh, to Philippians, uh, that's what we'll be in. So we've been doing these, um, uh, the study to and uh, kind of dealing with walking through how we're supposed to relate with each other um, um, in any type of relationship that we have uh, so you know session one was love and then session two was encourage and then uh, forgive uh, serve which which was last week and uh, now that we're we're at yield and so I'm um, kind of continuing that whole servant mentality um, and kind of digging deeper what it means um, um, to think of others as ourselves and so um, the point for this lesson is going to be um, humbly place your needs of others before your own um, and so um, let's go ahead and pray and we'll get into uh, the lesson Heavenly Father I just thank you for um, this uh, beautiful day that you've given us God I uh, thank you for um, all that you've given us even through this this time um, that has been uh, so drastically different and, and so drastically has changed our lives and and most likely will will have an impact on on this generation um, uh, for years to come God but uh, we have seen your grace and your mercy shine throughout we have seen your love um, all around us God I, I pray that uh, even in the time of strife um, that we are starting to experience um, um, in addition to um, what, what uh, COVID-19 has, has brought, but just continue to pray for um, those who have lost, those who have seen injustice uh, in the times that we live in, that that relationships like this, when they start to get messy, God, that we can still um, um, see the best example of, of who you are, a servant, um, a, man who, uh, a man who was not only just a man, but God himself coming down um, and humility and, and sacrificing himself for us uh, that we take that same mindset um, in Jesus name amen all right so um, we uh, like I said we're gonna be in Philippians uh, 2 um, and then we'll be reading verses 1 through 8 and then uh, 13 and 15 um, so so we're talking about yield um, who likes I mean when I think about yield um, you know I always think about like Maybe like, um, you know, when things like queue up, um, as far as like, um, i trying to think what, um, well, if you've been out in the world uh, today, especially a little bit earlier, uh, when they, you know, there were still essential businesses open, like uh, grocery stores and stuff like that. I went to, um, I think Lowe's was the only time I actually had to wait in line to go into a store. Of course, there was a capacity in the store. Um, this is about a few weeks ago. Um, you know, it was, it was, you know, it was kind of like, oh, this is weird. This is different. Um. I think people were more calm because they understood 
Um, but um, have you ever experienced a time where people were rushing, like a, I don't know, Black, you know, like Black Friday or something like that, where people just want to get to be first so they can get that good deal? Um, it can lead to to just kind of. Um, you know, kind of frantic craziness, but it can also lead to you know almost uh, a violent uh, outbreak. You know, outbreak of violence to get that that TV for how much you know whatever the price is. Um, but you know, we we tend as humans wanting to be first for the good things. Uh, now, if it's something bad, um, like you know when you were a child or or when you had kids and they're waiting to get a vaccine or something like that, you know, hey, let let brother or sister go first. You know, I'll I'll wait here. You know, things like that. Um, you know, but that kind of delves out of our human nature of of, of being selfish, right? Uh, we all have um, a sinful nature, and I think um, that sinful nature is is desire for things that we want, um, things that we want, not not others, but what we want. Uh, we can see the example. I can see this example of my two boys. Uh, there could be a you know a toy just sitting out in the corner somewhere, and they're fine. You know, not to play with that toy until one of them picks it up, right? Um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, mostly most of the time, it's Dash who uh, will lose his mind if he can't play with that toy. But he's a little bit younger, and he's got that toddler mindset. Uh, but we grow up, and maybe we don't act as crazy, and maybe you know, like Dash, uh, we don't uh, yell or um, you know, sometimes even like you know punch. Uh, unfortunately, that's what uh, almost two-year-olds and toddlers uh, re resort to sometimes when they don't get their way. Um, but as adults, you know, we will tend to still have those self selfish desires. Maybe it, it doesn't come out into like a, a full on uh, brawl, but um, you know, it, there's other ways of backbiting and, and slandering, um, you know, ways that we want to get away or, or ways that we react when we don't get our way. Um, you know, that, that selfishness, that pride uh, kicks in. So um, Paul wrote to Philippians concerning this, this type of human nature. Uh, and he says in, uh, so Philippians uh, 2, uh, verses one through four, um, it says, "If there be uh, therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fill you my joy." So basically, saying, you know, this would make me very happy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Um, but in lowliness of mind, let in lowliness of mind let each esteem the other. Uh, let each esteem other better than himself. Look, not every man. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I got something caught in my throat. Give me one second. <laughs> there we go. All right. Look, not every man on his own things, but every man also. On the things of others so um, notice and I want to kind of jump to this notice it's not um, when we're talking about um, you know yielding right we're not talking about you know stepping down and being up like a walking man or anything like that you know Jesus didn't say you know um, love uh, love your neighbors and don't love yourself he said love your neighbor as yourself and so of course there are things that we have to we have responsibilities for we have our families we have our jobs things like that that we have to tend to but our when it comes to our, our desires, are we putting those above? When it comes to our comfort, are we putting that above um, an opportunity to help someone else, to do something for someone else that you you know you yourself would appreciate or have be done? Or and, and we even you know saw and later you know sometimes service means sacrifice as well. Um, and if we are to use the example which Paul will talk about later, um, our ultimate example of of, of yielding and and. And humility was Christ and Christ displayed that in his sacrifice on the cross um, and so we'll, and we'll get into that, that early but you know what are we doing uh, you know to that we, you know we see the we see a, a negative here in verse 3 that says you know uh, uh, let nothing be done to strife or vainglory or you know basically in and just in struggling and argument and um, and you know wanting your way you know but in loneliness it set each esteem other better than themselves and then he says you know look not every man on his own things but every man also so including also on the things of others let's go ahead and uh, go to um, and if you're in the book I'm sorry I haven't really been keeping up with the page but we're on 146 uh, we're gonna go to Philippians uh, 2 
um, still in chapter 2, but uh, verses 5 and 8. It says, uh, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the, light, likely, in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So this is this is our ultimate example. We are Christians. We are Christ followers, disciples of Christ. That means we are to follow the example of Christ, how he lived on this earth as a man, God in, 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 in fleshly form, who, who being in the form of God, um, you know, he was equal with God. He is the tri he's the part of the triune, uh, the Trinity of God, him, uh, the, 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 the being that is, you know, our, our creator, um, uh, came down in the form of man, just, you know, humbled himself enough to come down as his creation to live 33 years. And then not, not just to say, okay, this is how you live. But knowing that his his ultimate goal was to redeem, to save uh, his creation because of, of the sin uh, that they that they had that they had fallen into, that was separating uh, themselves from God and hurting them and, and causing death and destruction, he decided to take the ultimate price of sin and to die for us. And that is our our ultimate. Uh, when we think about humility, when when we think about yielding to others, when we think about um, serving others that should be our ultimate example um, when we think maybe this is too hard maybe this is too much uh, you know well it's it's not really my thing or you know this is going to be very uncomfortable or this could be very dangerous you know we are Christians we are Christ followers you know there are a lot of things that we should be leaving at the at, at, um, at the foot of the cross you know um, you know it, it our comfort um, and, uh, and and for some and, and for most and I would say for all be willing to leave our safety um, you know our our pride for sure pride pride is 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 something that if, if left uncontrolled this can never happen we can never fully uh, remove ourselves as a motivation for anything that we do if our ultimate motivation is because it lifts our own selves up, then pride is a problem. Um, is it good to give to charity? Yes. Is it good to make a big Is it good to make a big deal that you give to charity? Uh, no, no. Um, I would say that charity would still accept that money, um, but that sin of pride has has seeped in. That's between you know yourself and and others, and um, or I'm sorry, yourself and God, and it also can set a bad example. Um, I think about. Um, what the most the example I think about a lot of times, um, and, and Paul talks about this um, a, a little bit, and uh, we're going to be leading into verses uh, two and thirteen. Um, actually, let's go ahead and read it first, and then and I'll, I'll talk about it. So it says uh, in Philippians uh, chapter two, thirteen through fifteen, it says, "For it is good, which works uh, in both in you both to will and to do His good pleasure." Or, I'm sorry, let me restart that. For it is God who works or which works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure and so so basically what he's saying anything that is good as, as a Christian that we should be doing the motivation in in the ultimate uh, the reason we're doing it is because we are God it is God working through us uh, so so do all things without murmuring and disputing that you may be blameless and harmless sons of God sons and daughters of God without rebuke in the midst of uh, a crooked, perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. And this is kind of where I want to, um, we'll, we'll be getting through this, uh, ending up, wrapping up really quick. And so, um, I think, and, and if you're like any any of us um, at work, you know, we we know what it is like to complain. We know what it's like to do something hard or something we don't want to do or something we think is unfair. Um, and it's easy to start complaining. Um, in fact, um, um, a lot of times we, we uh, maybe cover it as, you know, maybe like, you know, uh, venting or, you know, gripe sessions, you know, as something maybe that's healthy. Um, and while I think it's healthy to, to share concerns and to listen to others' um, concerns about, about something or, you know, to be able to willingly 
uh, saying, hey, you know, I, I, I know this is what we want to do, you know, and that's, that's a healthy environment. There's ways to go about it. Um, and, um, you know, Paul was saying, hey, you know, even when you're doing something that you don't want to do, even when you're doing something, um, when you're yielding in a relationship or, um, you know, when your boss has asked you something that's maybe unfair or whatever it is, do it without griping, do it without murmuring and, and complaining, do it without griping. That shows, uh, when, when we, uh, and, and this is what I've, I've often had to get on myself about is, it's like, man, I, I sit there and complain for 20 minutes with a coworker, a coworker that I know that I have actively been trying to share Christ with, and I just, I felt like I just ruined it. And I have gone back to apologize and say, hey, you know, this is not something, you know, I should be looking for a better solution. Um, and instead of leading us down, you know, just these bad negative paths that won't lead to anything, you know, let's look for a solution. Um, and, and ultimately that comes from a, a part of, of who we are and whose we are. And that's what, what Paul was talking about earlier, you know, that, that joy that comes um, with knowing Christ. That even in those times of, of, of injustice, even in those times of, of unfair, we, you know, we don't sit and complain, but we, it, 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 it forces us to, to love on those who may be in that same situation. To be an example of, of joy and peace um, to those who, who do not know Christ, so that they may know Christ. So that they say, what is up with that guy? Um, you know, what is up with that, that woman? She, she, you know... I don't get her, you know, we are all having to do this awful job or we're all in this awful situation or, you know, this thing just happened and a normal person has every right to complain, every right to be unhappy. Um, but they're showing this, this light, they're showing this joy and, and this, and, and they're, they're looking out for me. They're looking out for others. That is what Christ example was on the cross. Um, we all know he was there uh, to glorify God, but he was also there so that we could be saved. And he did it um, without complaint. Um, he set, uh, it says Isaiah, you know, you know, he was, he was, he, he, he was uh, speechless in front of, um, in front of, you know, sheer, it was, it was, you know, even when, when asked and accused of, falsely of things, he was silent, uh, knowing that his ultimate, what he was there for was, to sacrifice himself for us and so that is you know that is our motivation to keep our eyes um, on our ultimate goal and that is to share the gospel with others that is to show others this is what this is the change that when God has come to my life when he works through me for his good pleasure this is what that looks like and this is not something that I myself am, am capable of because we all know that ourselves we, we tend to have um, Alt, you know, we, we tend to have alternate uh, motivations, alt, alternate uh, agendas, even when we're doing something that's supposed to, you know, good. But it's not good unless it's 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 for the kingdom. And so, um, here's some um, some small steps um, here. Uh, Living out loud always leaves us uh, with um, actually real quick. I just want to read, and this is on uh, verses uh, uh, 150. Um, I'd mark this down to to read it, and so. Um, it says, uh, so when, when you start uh, taking Paul's words seriously, your relationships will be affected. Uh, when you take the focus off yourselves and your circumstances, when you look for ways to, uh, to humble, uh, I'm sorry, when you look for ways to humbly serve others, when you stop complaining and start loving others through service, when you take the same attitude of Christ, all your relationships will be affected. And those same people will discover uh, you have stumbled upon a treasure that desperately longed to find inner peace and fixed joy. So, here's some small steps, or here's some, some steps, sorry, from small to large, right? So, small step, uh, park in the worst, uh, I like this one, park in the worst uh, space, and this is, you know, mainly when we start to maybe corporately worship, and I don't think we'll probably have too much of a problem, as there probably won't be too many cars in our parking lot, uh, but um, when, you know, this does start to uh, kick off, and, and um, we all start to start coming, and, you know, our parking lot is already smart, parking spaces at, at, uh, at uh, 160 Dennis Drive is already kind of a uh, little, little short on, on space. Uh, but park in the worst space in the church parking lot uh, next Sunday. I don't know where that would be with ours. Um, uh, but extra credit if it's raining. 
uh, come early and set up the room uh, for your next small group meeting. Uh, tell someone how much they, you appreciate their gift or skills in a particular area. So medium steps, share a story of a major failure from your past, confess your need for the gospel, um, volunteer in a homeless ministry, and treat those um, people as you would treat uh, governors and kings. There's, there's still, there's opportunities in our, in our own city for that, um, and I know that's something that um, uh, a lot of our students who have been looking towards and, and even participating in, in helping those who, who have, who are on the fringes of society who need um, that love and that care and that, and that service. And so, here's a large step: <clears throat> offer a sincere, sincere apology to someone you've hurt. Share your desire to be forgiven. Meet someone's need with a large sum of money and do it anonymously. So here's some steps um, that we can do, uh, starting with small to large. Um, and um, well, um, we're gonna wrap this, uh, this session up uh, for, t uh, for today. I um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're still enjoying it. Like I said, look for, for um, there will be other ways that we will uh, start to get engaged uh, with each other in our Sunday school, uh, you know, through the places our Sunday school hour that we were used to. Um, and so hopefully we'll have, um, we'll have other voices and other faces and other formats and the way that we can start uh, to get together in fellowship um, as, as, uh, as best as we can and as normal as we used to. And so, um, 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 like I said, thank you for, for tuning in and I um, hope to see you uh, next week. And um, I can't wait to actually see some of you guys physically uh, very soon. Very excited for it. Um, but uh, be safe, um, stay hopeful, stay joyful even in the situation, um, and, 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 and look outside yourselves. Love you, church. Have a good day.